Hello folks, Scott here with my Simon Says Stamp May 2017 Animation Card Kit. I'm sure everybody's seen this. I found the designer papers a little bit odd, basically in that they came in four by six sizes. This is one whole sheet, four by six. You can't really cover a complete A2 card with four by six. The other thing that bothered me was that all of the patterns, any of the patterns that were on the papers that had an orientation, all oriented sideways. There was no vertical patterns that worked vertically. Everything was sideways. Interesting pattern papers, not my favorite by any means. Our big treat in this kit was the Crayola Fine Line Markers. So I played around with these Fine Line Markers for a bit. They are not too bad for a Crayola product. A little blotchy when you go to mixing colors together. I had a hard time blending. I had an easier time getting a fade with a single color, but these colors kind of wanted to run all over the place. I did play around quite a bit with these markers to see what I could actually possibly accomplish. These are a great little bonus. I'll definitely keep these in my stock. So I, of course, went through and stamped everything just to get a feel for it. Um, I didn't stamp any of the butterflies. I'm not really a butterfly person. I don't do butterflies. So I concentrated on these four images. I, of course, played around with stamping them in colors stamping them multiple times, and of course, playing with the acetate grid paper over the top of them to see how they worked. I liked the hearts in a row in red. When I found out I could stamp in color and the color would actually transfer, that made me very happy. Get a pretty good green cactus behind the black grid paper just by stamping them in green. It took me a while to figure out what this cactus was doing, but I think I figured out that he's tossing a heart around, spinning around and tossing a heart around. So that comes into play later. And then I decided to dig into the kit and start making cards. So of course I went to one of the watercolor papers to begin with. This is the Flamingo watercolor paper. Originally, the sentiment on it says, hello, love. That sentiment didn't do too much for me. So I colored this up with my uh, clean, my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Then I decided to replace the hello, love heart up here with a Let's Flamingo. I die cut the watercolor flamingo with a stitched rectangle die. I matted that on some coordinations glimmer cardstock put that all on the doll pink card base used a Doris die to cut the hearts out let's flamingo I did on my silhouette the font is marketing script font uh, pink touch of green let's flamingo card number one so I decided to play with some of the acetate sheets that came with the kit so we came up with this you rock card this is some of the pattern paper from the kit just a little piece of it i then matted it on one of the solid color sides of another piece of cardstock this is all mounted on the green apple cardstock i have some mylar lying around the house just old sheets of mylar i think i have this in my uh, gift wrapping box uh, but decided to fill in the glasses of these round glasses with mylar so that you actually get a good reflection in <laughs> the mylar you can't quite see me there but you can see the camera almost you rock i thought this was fun cut this out of the acetate cut little circles out of the mylar with my silhouette if anybody has a silhouette and wonders what size that circle is it's 0.92 inches the You Rock sentiment I cut out on my silhouette. This is the Futura font. This was cut out of the 
Coordination's Metallic Craft Core cardstock. This is a Tim Holtz cardstock. Wet U Rock, pretty simple, straightforward card. I liked being able to use only a little bit of that pattern paper. A few sequins in the lenses of the glasses on the pattern paper. Of course, the mylar in the big glasses. I even put a couple of sequins in the corners of the eyeglasses there. You rock, great fun card. My second card for this month. So I'm still playing with the acetate sheets. I really liked the kite. It was on the side of the page, so I realized I could use the kite as the edge of a card. The stamps, the clouds, the sentiment are from a stamping up set called The Sky is the Limit. I did a few of the clouds in the blue paper on the back. This is a coordinations paper that I cut to fit for the inside. Use the kite from the acetate. A few more tone-on-tone -tone clouds on the outside. The sky is the limit. This is fun. I really liked the kite on this piece, and it made a perfect edge for this fun acetate card. That was my third card. So my fourth card, on the numbers acetate sheet, there was this terrific pink polka dot three. I have a niece whose next birthday is her third birthday, so when I saw that three, I decided I had to make a birthday card for her. I actually cut the three out of the acetate sheet in quite a large circle. I thought I would make a shaker card with it. Who doesn't want to make shaker cards when you've got acetate sheets? So as I was putting, starting to put this together, I had my big three cutout sitting on top of my pattern paper and I realized that it looked like a magnification of that paper. I went online, I dug up a nice, simple magnifying glass image from the net, downloadable, easy, put it in my silhouette, cut it out, made this great little shaker card with it. Great fun, I really, really like this card. It's kind of an optical illusion in itself. It kind of looks like that magnifying glass is magnifying the paper underneath it. No sentiment on the front, but on the inside it says, big birthday wishes. I uh, filled the window with some Doris iridescent sequins in a couple of sizes. I did cover the magnifying glass with glossy accents, a big three for a big birthday wish. It's my fourth card. I really like that. I feel like it kind of goes along with the whole optical illusion of this set. So I tackled the cactus watercolor card. Again, I used my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I couldn't help it. I had to use them. The sentiment on this card was thinking of you. So I created this extra sentiment to go in the middle here. At first glance, it just says, I love us. But if you look really closely, you see that it says, I love cactus. <laughs> I thought that was extremely funny. At first glance, it kind of looks like just uh, an ellipse before the us, I love us. But when you look real close, it says, I love cactus. I had a great time with this card. I did trim this down with a stitched rectangle die to go on top of the green apple cardstock. I love us, my cactus watercolor card. Okay, time is up. I have to work on these animation stamps. So the simplest one seemed to be the eyeglass one. Everything I had seen online as far as these stamps go always had the stamp moving behind the acetate sheet. I, of course, wanted to make things difficult, so I thought, well, let's make the acetate sheet move instead of the image move. So this one moves the sheet in front of the glasses. It works fine. The sheet gives a little bit more resistance because it's got more sharp edges, I think, than the, and this is actually fine. This works good. I again put it on the designer paper from the kit. Your future is so bright. Uh, that font is Britannic Bold. I created that on my silhouette and cut it out. I did cut out the second pair of sunglasses from the acetate sheet. Pattern paper, I cut a window in, put it on a white mat. 
This finished up the sunglass paper. I did take a few pieces of mylar, punched holes, and used those on top of some of the sunglasses on the pattern paper. I thought that was fun. Your future is so bright. What with graduation coming up and everything, I thought this was a fairly appropriate card. This on the navy, of course. So then I said, let's play with the heart. It took a long time for me to figure out what I wanted to do with the heart animation stamp. But this is what I came up with. This is a old, old quote. Two souls with but a single thought. Two hearts that beat as one. A little tassel on the end says pull, as far as I think. So we've got one heart going past the window. And we have a second heart following it right behind. And once you pull it out all the way, the little tab says, I love you. Two souls with but a single thought two hearts that beat as one. Just a little grommet in the end of my paper here. I did go through and create a little pattern for this. I found these animation stamps to be pretty fussy. You have to be pretty accurate as far as where you place the, your stamp, how you glue down your acetate. Everything has to line up pretty good or the animation is not very good at all. So I, of course, made templates the little slider inside of this card is three and a half inches by two inches. This is one inch by one and seven eighths inch. I played with this, just simply used a Darice die cut in the middle of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. Played with these pieces together, see if they would work okay. Originally, I thought I'd put half of the sentiment on the tab, but there's just not that much room there. So I do do templates. I like this very much. This is cut out of uh, some banners that I created in silhouette. This font is Apple Chancery font. A few sequins for a little glitter. This, of course, is designer paper from the kit. But if you look, the hearts are all setting this way. So if you had turned it sideways, the hearts would all be sideways. Again, the pattern kind of forced the horizontal execution. Of course, it's way past Valentine's Day, but it's never too early to start thinking about next year. I did stamp the hearts in red, and as far as I'm concerned, the red plays through the black acetate just fine. Two hearts that beat as one. That's my second animation card. So then I had to tackle the flamingo. But this is what I came up with. I did stamp the flamingo in a coral red. Works really pretty good in this instance. I cut this frame out of a couple of stitched rectangle dies. Created the flamingo piece that slides around behind it. Again, I sketched that out. This piece is four inches by two and three quarters by three quarters of an inch for the tab. So my sentiment for this is even the pinkest flamingo starts out gray. I thought that was a really nice sentiment to go along with the flamingo. I forced our flamingo designer paper into a vertical orientation. I used the edge of the watercolor paper that I had cut off of the cactus card. I used that piece, colored it lightly with the pink fine line marker, put it on the edge. That gave me a quarter of an inch between this frame and the outer frame to squeeze that flamingo paper in. So I cut the flamingo paper in strips and pieced them together all the way around the card so that they were facing in the right orientation. You can see a seam right there. I think there's a seam hidden over here. There's a seam hidden. There's a seam hidden up here. If you look closely, you can see the seams. But if you are just glancing at it, all you see is that there is some pink flamingo pattern paper back there in the vertical orientation. The pink flamingo stamp was too big to use in a horizontal version would take up virtually the entire card horizontally so vertically even the pinkest flamingo starts out gray that's our moving pink flamingo i thought the coral pink worked very well behind the black grid paper i of course 
took a wink of Stella pen and glittered up the frame on here. Gave it a little handle on the side. This is all cardstock from the kit. This is one of the pattern papers from the kit. Works pretty good. Actually, I think it works better in the camera <laughs> than it does in real life. Even the pinkest flamingo starts out gray. That's my flamingo animation card. So I had the cactus to go. So I used my Tombow brush markers to ink up this stamp because I wanted to ink the heart in red and the cactus in green. So here you can see that, yes, that cactus is actually juggling a little heart around. It works really well in the green and red. I just colored the stamp with my Tombow brush markers. You're stuck with me. A great sentiment. I did use the cactus paper from the set. I thought this was a fun card. I cut my window out of this from my Spellbinders Deckle Edge rectangle dies. Glitter on the edges to cover up, of course, what's on the white cardstock now. You're stuck with me. A little reinforcement over here for the pull tab. I really like the fact that the, you can see the heart. If you color the heart separately from the cactus before you stamp it, I think it makes a little bit more sense. You're stuck with me. That's my cactus animation card. So when I heard that we were getting this animation stamp set with our card kit this month, I went online and did some research, not just into the stamps, but also into the whole animation thing. Now these are actually, uh, I believe they're called moray patterns, moray animation. So I did go online. I, of course, have some acetate, printable acetate. There's a lot of places online where you can download images and they have the little grids that go with them, everything. And you, there's some really amazing animations available online. This, of course, is a wolf or a dog running. These are, of course, bigger than the stamps in our set. So they give you a little more, f I, I believe they give you f more frames per movement. I think these larger images have like seven frames for their animation, while I believe the stamps in our kit have three or four frames for the animation. Great fun. They work really nice. Oh, this is a great one. Some of these bigger ones are terrific. This, of course, is a dinosaur. There you go. You can see the dinosaur moving. Again, this dinosaur has got about seven different frames of animation, so it makes his movements very smooth, very good. This also gave me the idea that I can stamp in color because this image is in color. Though the grid is black, it still reads as color through the grid as it's doing its animation. I thought that was great fun. I also found this other one that I went ahead and printed out that I happen to really, really like. <laughs> Just this big spinning gear. A great piece of moire animation. These are all great fun. Of course, seeing just the image. I didn't try to reduce any of these down to the size of a card, but I did find some other patterns that were usable in smaller formats. So, for my last card this month, we've got have a groovy birthday with a little moire action going on right in the middle. <laughs> oh, this card made me very happy. I actually found this ray pattern online. I will link to it down below. Printed one in acetate, one on paper. The one behind is what's moving and creating the movement. Have a groovy birthday that's printed and cut on my silhouette. I did use the Brady Bunch remastered font. I thought it worked perfectly for this card. This is yellow cardstock from the designer paper. 
I did find some stickers, some groovy flower stickers to stick on the front here. Have a groovy birthday. I will probably make lots of these cards for friends and people of my age who still know what groovy means. <laughs> Have a groovy birthday. It works in both directions. A great card. I really, really, really enjoy this card. Those are my 10 cards for the month, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. I do have plenty of leftovers. I've got the acetate sheets that I haven't used all of. I do have that nice little gift card that came in the kit. Now, of course, of course, Uchi Designs has got many, many more animated stamps and dies that will create envelopes and create flaps and create pull tabs and create all of the hardware around the stamps that probably makes them easier to move. I always appreciate getting new products in a card kit. This is a brand new product. It was just premiered at the CHA this year. I know that I probably will not buy any more of this line. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. This kit ultimately did inspire me. It made me think outside of the box. If you enjoyed this video, please like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all your friends. I just found out that if you get a thousand likes, if you get a thousand likes on your video, you get like a golden like thumb or, or something like that. So give me some likes, folks. And please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and Happy crafting!